Planet Dolan. From crew members to thrown animals, we count 10 of the strangest things accidentally filmed in movies. Hello there. My name is Nixium, Lord of the Dead, and today I will be reading the words on this here piece of paper for your enjoyment. Number 10. Background extras normally get small pay for working very long hours. Like in the 2003 film The Last Samurai starring Tom Cruise. The film told the story of a former American army officer who is hired by the Emperor of Japan to train the country's first army in modern warfare. In one scene, when Cruise's character arrives on horseback for the final battle, he dismounts. However, the horse must have had a problem with the extra behind him because, after getting off the horse, the horse kicks the extra in the groin. Now you'd think that he would be on the ground, writhing in pain, screaming in agony, you know, all that good stuff. But nah, he took it like a man and he stayed in character. That is one extra who deserves a raise. Number 9. Movie making is a lot of work, and it involves a lot of people. Everybody on set has their own responsibilities. The first assistant director, for example, is usually the one in charge of clearing up the set prior to filming a scene. But during the filming of Pirates of the Caribbean The Curse of the Black Pearl, another 2003 film, one person, presumably a crew member, can be seen behind Johnny Depp's left, staring into the water. This man sticks out like a sore thumb too while everybody else in the scene is dressed in dark and dirty, old-timey clothes. This man is wearing a white t-shirt and a cowboy hat. You can see him when Captain Jack Sparrow gets the Black Pearl and gives orders to his men. I hope that this man enjoyed his three seconds of fame. Number 8. In the early 1990s, there was something in this movie that made many viewers who saw it think, what the hell? And no, it wasn't pro wrestler Hulk Hogan's attempt at a film career. Actually, it was in the 1993 comedy, Mr. Nanny, where the Hulkster plays a former wrestler hired as a bodyguard and nanny to a businessman's two kids. At the beginning of the movie, a man throws his dog into the ocean as Hogan rides by on a motorcycle. We don't know why the man threw his poor dog into the ocean, but it's still a what-the-hell moment in an otherwise forgettable movie. But who knows? Maybe it was all planned, and the dog ended up getting stunt pay. Number 7. The 1985 comedy Teen Wolf is known for more than just being a werewolf movie starring Michael J. Fox. It's known for the ending. No, not when Fox's character wins his high school basketball game, but as the camera pans up the bleachers. In the bleachers are many extras, one of whom can be seen in the far left with his or her fly open. This is such a well-known moment that people have even called the gender of the extra into question. At first, people thought it was just a man exposing his manhood, then there were actually theorists who believed it was really a woman, judging by the build and the appearance of the extra. But the crotch, the crotch was still visible when it, when it wasn't supposed to be, so does the gender really even matter? Number 6. Even the popular Steven Spielberg-directed summer blockbuster Jurassic Park could not escape this list. Yet another film released in 1993. What was accidentally filmed was not the fault of a background extra or the result of a forgetful crew member, although that can be argued. It turns out that the camera panned up just a little too much in the famous scene where the motherfucking T-Rex breaks out of its enclosure during the thunderstorm. When the T-Rex raises up its head and goes, and lets out that signature roar, the camera pans up just a little bit too far, and it reveals a bit of the movie magic, one of the many sprinklers used to create the effect of heavy rainfall. And admit it, you didn't see it, I didn't see it, 
because we were too focused on the motherfucking T-Rex. Yeah! Number 5. This movie scared a lot of people when it came out back in 2002, especially the scene where the ghostly little girl crawls out of the television. But what made this horror film even creepier was something that was accidentally filmed in the background, if someone notices it. Towards the end of the movie, when the characters Rachel and Noah are about to put their sleeping son Aiden to bed, something lurks in behind them. It's a figure standing in a darkened room in front of a moonlit window frame. You see the figure's head and shoulders just after Noah picks up Aiden from the floor. Of course, there was a wild theory that it was a real ghost. To others, well, just another case of a stagehand not doing a good job of hiding when the cameras rolled. By the way, this is the second time that a movie directed by Gore Verbinski made it on this list. The first was Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, and it was for basically the same reason. Unless the movie's actually haunted. Number four. Most people remember the musical Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory for Wonka's disturbing psychedelic boat ride through the tunnel. But there's a scene that might make us feel pain and not disturbed. It's also completely unintentional. Earlier in the movie, hungry children visit a candy shop where the clerk sings a song. The candy man can... Yeah, I remember that fucking song. I love that song. During the musical number, he lifts the countertop to let the little boys and girls browse through his selection. While opening the countertop, a little girl in the front is accidentally hit on the chin. However, and probably to the director's delight, she takes it like a pro and continues being a good little extra throughout the rest of the song. It looks like the candy shop clerk gave this little customer the wrong kind of jawbreaker. Number three. No, this isn't the bad boys that starred Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. Back in 1983, Sean Penn starred in this crime drama about a young man sent to reform school after killing his enemy's brother. This is only a movie, though. If you need proof, just watch the final fight between Penn and Isai Morales. While they're fighting, a cameraman complete with a camera, squats on the floor, recording the action. You would think something like that would have definitely been caught by the director, or at least the editor. But nope. Perhaps the cameraman was noticed, but they were so behind schedule, a retake was not possible. Number 2. Yet another movie starring Michael J. Fox appears on this list, and it also has to do with a crotch. In the shot. In 1990, Back to the Future Part 3 was released. It also starred Christopher Lloyd as Doc Brown and Elizabeth Shue as Fox's girlfriend, Jennifer. Towards the end of the movie when Doc Brown is talking to Marty and Jennifer from the train, behind him you can see a little boy signaling to his crotch. At first, he makes an innocent enough gesture to get someone's attention off camera, but then, he points to his crotch. Though some speculate he was just a little pervert who had a little thing for Shu, it's more than likely he just had to go to the bathroom. He does, after all, have a pretty uncomfortable and desperate look on his face. Yeah. But hey, if you gotta go, you gotta go. And number one. Mel Gibson's 1995 epic war drama about William Wallace is convincing in its set design as the film takes place in 13th century Scotland. Unfortunately, despite winning five Oscars, there are at least a few scenes that remind viewers what century it really is. Although not too noticeable, a car can be seen driving in the distance when Gibson, as Wallace, stands back up after kissing the deceased Murren. Another, more obvious glimpse of a white car can be seen during a battle scene in the lower left-hand corner. But cars aren't the only modern-day invention that can be seen in this period piece. A random man in a baseball cap, probably a crew member, can be briefly seen behind a crowd while Gibson talks. 
what is it with all these random people appearing in all these scenes? And also, I can say that William Wallace and his gang could have maybe used that car or two during the battles. If he had had those, then William Wallace would have definitely have had an edge against Edward Longshanks. But no. No. Alright everybody, thank you for watching. But we have a new question for the day. What was the worst time you were ever caught lying? Let us know in the Reddit page linked below, and you might be featured in a future countdown. Hey, for some, it might even be putting across a message. Hey, Porkins, I know you love some fatty fried treats. Have some nuggies. I show my affection for you and fatty fried treats because that's all you think about, you fat piece of shit.